What's up guys, today we're taking a look at Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Weaponizer Bumblebee. And this is a much upscale size Bumblebee we have here. Uh, he's like a little bit shorter than a leader class, but this is what the Prime series has been giving us with Hasbro here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's called a Weaponizer. And all it is is either Optimus or Bumblebee that have these Weaponizer gimmicks implanted in their bodies and they deploy. Which we'll get to in a second. Now, with this figure here, there's two things that I'm going to complain about the most above all. And that's going to be on his hands here, how, how the wheels are kind of right here, and you can see visibly the taillights. That is one minor nitpick, but it's tolerable. You know, I can ignore that because we can work with his hands here and kind of put them like that or just kind of turn them in so they're not noticeable. But back here with this backpack, this is pretty ridiculous. It's not as bad as Weaponizer Optimus Primes, but it's, it's still huge. It's basically the whole car. It really kind of reminds me of the Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Bumblebee. With that, you just lifted the whole, pretty much the, the roof with the back and a little bit of the hood. And then you just folded it and compacted it all in his back. That's what this truly reminds me of. But besides those two things, he looks very nice towards the show. I mean, we finally have accurate feet. They might not be 100% properly painted, but this is how his feet are actually supposed to be. They're not supposed to have, you know, the taillights behind her and such. This is what they're supposed to look like. So when I first saw this figure, that was one thing that drew me closer to buying this right away. Uh, the shoulders are accurate as well. Very nice head sculpt. He's got very nice light piping. Uh, the chest isn't too bad either. That, that's pretty good. He's nowhere near perfect, but he's a good size figure. Now, in terms of scaling, this is not going to be a figure you want to pick up to scale with other figures. This is purely, uh, to me, kind of like a fan base of Bumblebee. Someone who is obsessed with either Optimus Prime or Bumblebee. And I'm referring to the Weaponizer Optimus because they gave us two giant sized robots of these guys. And really that's what it comes down to. So if you're looking for any kind of scaling information or picking up for that reason, this is not the type of figure you want to be picking up to scale with your deluxe and Voyager size figures. Now with this posability, the arms here, as you can hear, ratchet very loudly and they won't go a full 360. You come over here and you can see there's just a piece of plastic in here that just stops it when you get about there. So that's kind of annoying, but it's not really bothering me too much but then you come over here and then go out pretty much they just swing in and out because of the wheel section here and does that wheel spin no it doesn't that is stuck in place um you can rotate here at the elbow 360 degrees you can bend at the elbow forwards not backwards and then down here on the hands these have no management out of them because they're just on a hinge in there but that's due to transformation so nothing there uh, nothing at the waist right here at his legs let's bring these up they ratchet out and in they can go forward and back in a very weak ratchet, ratchet at the knee, and nothing at the feet. And that is one thing that kind of sucks, but that kind of destroys his posability. Because now there's no management in his feet whatsoever. So if you want to do one pop forward on those ratchet joints at his knees, he's just simply going to fall back like so. So you can't kind of have these sticking out away from his legs. They have to be pressed up like that against the rest of the body. And then lastly up here on his head, it's not a ball joint, which can rotate complete 360 and does have very nice light piping as well. That's probably not coming off on camera as well, but you can just see it goes up and down very nice. We can look up and down. So the, the upper body posability isn't too bad as well as in the legs, but the feet are just going to ruin it for you because you can't really get good poses out of them. Not, nothing too real crazy. I mean, okay, he can sit on his knee. As you can see, I really don't have to fight too much for that. But if I want to bend his knees forward, he's still not going to sit. And also up here, these little pieces under the headlights tend to just pop back up on their own during transformation. But now we straighten them all out here. Let's get to his uh, little gun right here. Now, I'm glad that they actually gave us this because this is his original gun. The problem is, though, the peg is too long. Why the peg is too long? I, I feel as if it has something to do with it attaching to the back of the car mode here. But you still could have kept it a lot shorter and still have it able to pop in there. But we'll discuss that when we get into the, the vehicle mode. But this just slots into either one of his forearms and that doesn't look too bad. Until you turn it sideways and you see the huge gap. And then of course the directions and the packaging show you to put it in his hand. Which doesn't look bad but that's not properly accurate to the show. And then last but not least we'll do is weaponize robot mode. Which you simply, all you're going to do 
And I like this kind of better because it, it gets rid of a button back here like they had on the Weaponizer Optimus. Even though you still got one here, which I don't like. But all you gotta do is press down his head. And it lights up and deploy. Now you probably really didn't see it too well. And I personally just like to push these back on my own. But what you're supposed to do is come right here and push that down. And then it'll stay in place like so. And then you just push his head. And they're going to deploy. Now I'm going to go about halfway back. And there you go. Now you can kind of see the LED red light in there. It's not very strong. And it doesn't stay lit up when they're deployed. So you basically just push this back. It lights up for a second. And that's it. Now, the way they spin, I think that's great. That's very cool. And that's a good look for Bumblebee here. It's just the whole backpack here is really throwing me off. and just ruining the look here. Uh, you can manage it somewhat, I suppose, like that. And have it entirely, you know, not completely. Because now the, the doors are a little bit more accurate because of the way they're angled. But if you have it properly the way it's supposed to be, that's a bit more accurate. But having the whole roof section there is just really killing it for me. Now back here, this doesn't tab in too securely as well. There's two tabs in here, and they slot into two slots <laughs> right over here. And it's just not secure enough. You just, you could push it in there, but it's just, you know, it, you can feel it lock in place. It's just not very secure. Now to transform him into his car mode, unpeg that, deploy these away, and we'll start down here on the legs. You want to flip these forward, just like so. Come up here, push that in, push that in. And then you're going to see a little tab right here on his left leg. Tab that into the right leg. And it's not incredibly secure either there as well. So you can push that up, take this whole section. And now here's what I was talking about, how it's like uh, the Lux Dark of the Moon Bumblebee. You just open this all up. And now you have pretty much the whole car. You know, the, the doors and everything here, that was just like Dark of the Moon Deluxe Bumblebee. But besides that, you kind of want to get this out of your way as much as possible because you're going to have to do a lot of work with these arms. And you flip the head back there. Detach this. You're going to see two tabs there and the two tab holes. Separate that from there and bring this up. And then you're going to have his head tucked back here. Now before you do all that, you want to come over here and just slide these up. The hand will be covered by the taillight, and you can see it just kind of, this is how it was. It was just laying over the wheel there. So you know, so bring that forward, and now you can see it's hiding right behind there. So you come over here, and you want to pop this out. It's on a double hinge. Rotate it up as far as you can go. Slide it around. And then you want to have it like that, so now this whole... It's not yellow, it's kind of orange, but you want that completely flat here. So now this can go back, hide under the body, as well as complete the back of the car here. And you want to do the same exact thing over here. Just attach it from the wheel there. Make sure this is all out and out of your way. All the way up as far as you can go. Make sure this is all straight. Take his hand here. Cover it behind that tail light. Slot that in. And these will tab together as well. Sorry about that, guys. I had to go off camera for a minute because it's really a tight uh, lock back here. And there was something I didn't notice before when I was playing with this. There's two tabs on the bottom of the bumper here that will slot into the feet. So these two feet will tab together. The bumper will tab together. And then there's two tabs on the bottom of the bumper that will tab into the feet. And then finally, once that's all set, you just want to pretty much lay it down here. Cover that up. Push that all together. These will all tab in. Close the door, there's tabs there. And it's really pushing this all together. It's just, the doors don't stay too securely in. So you squeeze them shut, and now this popped up back here. And now the door just popped again. So the doors are really my biggest problem because they don't just stay together as well as they should. And now we have them in the car mode here, uh, finally. And my big issue is, is these doors, the tabs in them are so small, they're not strong enough to, to really hold together. So you can see this one is kind of still open a little bit, and it doesn't close all the way. 
So when I squeeze that one, it'll pop this up and then it'll pop this out and then I got to press this again and then it'll pop this out and it's just a chain of events that keeps reoccurring. So this is the best I'm actually going to get it to look. And I've seen other reviews of this and people have seemed to not have proper control of the figure as well. It just doesn't want to hold together in this mode. Now, he does have the gun here. And the only place that I can see to store this is going to be right back here. Which kind of looks like a, a gas tank. It's decorated like that. But you just take it. And this is what I was talking about with the peg being so long. Because now as you can see the roof would stop it right there. So if it wasn't for that peg being so long. You probably wouldn't be able to peg it in there. And have it facing forward. You could probably have it facing other ways. And really push it in more. But it, I guess they just really wanted that to be facing forward. So that when you press this. <laughs> You can have that complete look now. I don't think that's worth having the ridiculously long peg, but whatever. Um, another thing you're going to notice here is the black lining here isn't continued. As you can see, the stripe goes up here. It's supposed to come down here and continue along the rest of the body. And you got a different shade of yellow here. Like I said, it's, it's just about orange. He's missing some silver on the rims, but I'm kind of used to that with the R.I.D. mold, even though I have the first edition. Uh, he's got a nice Autobot symbol up here. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. He's a fairly decent figure. I mean, I'm not really looking for high quality in him because he's not, you know, like a deluxe or a Voyager. Something that I'm really personally collecting. He's kind of more like a, I don't know, just, hey, I have a giant Transformer kind of thing here. But yeah, I mean, if I was going to shove him like this, I would have the gun facing sideways. And then you just press this right under here because that's where his head originally was. And when you do that, it deploys him out like so. And then here is the piece that you use to redeploy them. So you could do that, but that's not what you're supposed to do. For this mode, there's that little tab I was telling you about. You're supposed to pull it back. I feel like that's too much of a pain as it is. You're better off just grabbing the hood and pushing it back simply like so. Now for a vehicle comparison, there's Bumblebee. And I'll bring a Beast Hunters Deluxe Bumblebee as well as Beast Hunters Deluxe Smokescreen. Now, obviously, you can see it's gigantic. It's absolutely huge compared to these deluxe size figures, which is what it's supposed to be. But it's just giving you a good idea that if you have Beast Hunters Bumblebee, R.I.D. Deluxe Bumblebee, or the Deluxe Smokescreen, the kind of size of figure you're getting. Now, here. besides that, there's not much more I could say about it. Hey, he's a really nice looking car. He has his downfalls, like right here, the different kind of paint job there. Um, he's got translucent blue windows there, but back here is all painted blue. At least he has painted tail lights. He has the tailpipes. The car mode is overall pretty nice looking. It just has its faults like any figure does. Now for transformation back, we want to separate this from there. Lift this whole section up once you open the doors. That'll just separate from the rest of the body. If you want to make it easier, you can get your nail in there. Lift that up. And then this should separate from the rest of the body here. There you go. Now like Dark the Moon Bumblebee, like I keep saying. You want to open this up. Separate. Bring these arms out, just like that, and you can tab those in right into the front wheels, just like so. Come around here, you want to take this whole section and lift it forward, and it's on a double hinge in here, so you're going to have a hinge on the body and a hinge on the waist, and you want to tab that into the two slots on the upper portion of his body. Then you want to flip the feet down, like I said before, push that up. Push this up. They should tab in very securely like so. Then you want to come up top here, rotate the arms down, kind of lift his fingers out of here, slide them over to reveal his hands. Do the same exact thing over here. There's that. Now we can flip up his head and you don't want to push it all the way. I mean, it's your option. If you do, you'll just be deploying the guns. Come back here. You're going to want to slide this into this little hole right in here. So fold the windshield down, slot that in there. It should go all the way to grab the bumper of the car. Once you do that, like I said, very loosely it slots in. Fix the wings up. Take his gun. Reattach it to his form like I like to do. 
And now he's back in his robot mode. Now overall, guys, it's a fun gimmick. It's definitely something interesting for kids. I don't mind it myself. I think it's pretty cool. I like the concept. I like the look. Like I said, my minor problems with it is that he has a tail lights behind his forearms. You can hide those, though, very nicely. And the backpack, like we got with Optimus. They both have backpacks. I think his is a bit more manageable than uh, Optimus Prime's. Oh, wait. There's one last step I missed. You want to angle these down. And that'll complete his transformation. Um, but other than that, yeah, he has a much more manageable backpack than Optimus. He's definitely, I feel, not more solid because the car mode doesn't stay together too well. And it has those inaccurate paint colors on the front of the car there in front of the doors. So that's something that's kind of like, eh, to me. But overall, he, he's a pretty good figure. If you like giant bumblebees or giant optimuses, I would definitely say to pick up both of these figures. It just sucks that I'm not going to be able to get him in any kind of great poses because of his ill-articulated feet. And one more thing I wanted to mention that I find kind of funny. I, I understand why they did it. It was kind of, we just need to get the figure made, I kind of think is the real reason. But Bumblebee has four tires. And here in his robot mode, we could see one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight molded wheels in there. So he has eight tires. That's kind of weird. With the first edition, you kind of saw they incorporated where his real wheel became his shoulder, and then his back wheels just came down to the feet. Does it really bother me? I could really care less. But just letting you guys know about that kind of oddness in the figure's look here. Hey guys, I put out brand new reviews twice a week, so check back every single week for brand new reviews of your favorite Transformers. You can join me for more Transformers discussion at facebook.com slash Prime, or you can follow me on Twitter at Prime. Don't forget, if you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you think of the Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Weaponizer Bumblebee. And if you had any issues with the figure as well. Stay tuned for more giveaways, and once again guys, this is Mr. TF Prime, and I want to thank you for watching. <laughs>